For scorpions, survival has always been the primary motivator. 450 million years ago, when plants were first colonizing land, scorpions made their debut. These were giant aquatic creatures, their sprawling bodies supported by the shifting waters of a planet in transition. Within the next hundred million years, scorpions crawled onto land, one of the first aquatic species to become terrestrial. It was a hostile environment. Scorpions not only adapted, they flourished. As the earth cooled, they found niches to exploit. Eons passed, continents shifted, civilizations rose and fell. In the 21st century, scorpions crawled the earth unscathed. They are living fossils, unaffected and oblivious to change. And as air conditioning now allows humans to build their homes in deserts and jungles, encounters with scorpions will only increase. Living together safely depends on understanding the habits of these remarkable animals. Scorpions now radiate across the entire planet on all major land masses except Antarctica. More than 2,000 different species have evolved to accommodate wildly differing habitats. From rainforests to mountaintops to sun-baked deserts, they've got what it takes to survive in the most severe and extreme environments. Scorpions could even feel at home in a post-nuclear wasteland. Radiation, capable of wiping out almost all other life forms, seems to have little effect on them. Wherever they find themselves, they are masters at discovering a way to meet their needs. They are continuing victors in the evolutionary arms race. As their prey has evolved defenses, the scorpion has evolved better weapons of attack. Walking across the sands of southeastern Arizona, the giant desert hairy scorpion. It's the largest scorpion in North America. In this arid environment, the desert hairy searches for its prey, small lizards, crickets, even the tarantula. The local tarantula is a species known as the desert blonde. A tarantula's eyesight is rudimentary, not nearly keen enough to spot the partially concealed scorpion. Gripping the log with its tiny claws, the tarantula manages an escape. It's a warm, windless night, perfect hunting conditions for the desert scorpions. But for this tarantula, it's like navigating a minefield. On a night like this, its only hope is to find refuge in a burrow of its own, venom.
the scorpion maneuvers the tarantula to consume it head first. A clue to the scorpion's survival lies in its archaic anatomy. The parts are rudimentary, but remarkably efficient. Ancient fossils show that little has changed for hundreds of millions of years. Although there are slight variations from one species to the next, the basics are always the same. The main body is covered by a hard carapace, or plate, impermeable to water and able to expand across its joints. Claws are used for capturing and crushing prey. These powerful pedipalps combine the sensitivity of antennae with the grasping ability of a pair of pliers. Chelicerae, or jaws, are like tiny pincers used for chewing and consuming prey. Their two center eyes and up to five pairs of lateral eyes provide only rudimentary vision. Unique to scorpions are sensory organs called pectines that protrude on either side underneath the body. They comb the ground, giving the scorpion chemical clues to its environment. The articulated tail and its crowning glory, the stinger. Throughout human history, the scorpion has been feared and reviled. Because they're nocturnal, their habits were always shrouded in mystery, and people assumed the worst. Scorpions were considered agents of the devil or the underworld. And even today, few people think of scorpions as anything less than terrifying. But the truth about scorpions is only just emerging. It was in the late 1960s that a startling discovery thrust scorpion research on an enormous leap forward. All species of scorpions fluoresce under ultraviolet light. The glow is caused by a substance in the outer layer of the scorpion's body. This glowing layer is so durable that it's often found in scorpion fossils hundreds of millions of years old, and it still fluoresces. No one yet knows the function of this feature, but it's allowing researchers to find and study scorpions as they roam through the dark. Scorpions are evolutionary success stories. What is their secret to survival? Is it their foolproof anatomy? Their ability to adapt? Or is it something else entirely? The answer may lie in the hunt. A scorpion is an unflinching assassin with merciless pincers and a venom-charged stinger. A hungry scorpion is built to kill. Bunker, a scorpion can check out the evening's offerings. After dark, a parade of nocturnal creatures erupts onto the desert floor. It could well be the cast from a nightmare. These night crawlers are enticed out by the evening's lower temperatures and cooling desert sands. 
It's only a matter of time before one will venture across a scorpion's burrow door. With no time to react, this wolf spider is dragged into the scorpion's lair. A feast can take several days and may be enough to sustain a scorpion for months. Although a burrow is preferable, every once in a while, a scorpion may decide to stretch its legs. This giant desert hairy is one of few species known to venture out for food. Like all scorpions, the desert hairy is able to detect prey using the incredibly sensitive hairs on its legs. Even a mealworm's subtle movements create vibrations through the ground. The hairs act like sophisticated sensors, picking up the tiny waves. As the grains of sand shift, the waves hit the hairs of each leg at slightly different intervals. This information is processed quickly, telling the scorpion the direction and exact distance of its prey. This mealworm may as well be holding a flashing neon sign. With such a lethal skill set, a scorpion rarely needs to venture far from its burrow. Whether it's an ambush or an attack, the hunt is only the beginning. Armed with weapons of destruction, the methods scorpions use to kill their prey varies from species to species. An Asian forest scorpion moves silently through the humid jungles of Burma. This species is found throughout the tropics of Southeast Asia. It tracks across the damp forest floor, searching for a crevice large enough to fit its menacing frame. scour burrows for insects and grubs. This small lizard is painfully unaware of the trap that waits before it. Asian forest scorpions rarely use their stinger. Equipped with incredibly strong claws, they prefer to crush their prey to death. The merciless grip folds the gecko into submission. In the damp, dark confines of its burrow, this scorpion will require days to consume its catch. Uniquely designed membranes in the torso expand like an accordion to accommodate the feast. With a large meal like this, the scorpion's body weight can increase by more than one third. If the pincers of a scorpion are particularly small and narrow, chances are the tail is powerful and packed with venom. For these scorpions, a quick sting may be all that's required to finish off an adversary. The sun drops down over the Kalahari Desert, disappearing. It's a medium-sized scorpion with a preference for the tropics. A red rump tarantula picks its way across the moist forest floor. It's a juvenile, too young to anticipate the danger standing by. The slender pincers of a gracilis get to work, but the tiny pincers have their limit. This scorpion relies on its agile tail to deliver the death blow.
the poison quickly takes effect, paralyzing some limbs, inducing small convulsions in others. Before long, the tarantula is dead. Using its versatile claws to position its dinner, the gracilis settles in for a long meal. Venom varies from species to species. One venom may be toxic to insects, another to mammals, another to crustaceans. Depending on habitat and the prey available, each species has evolved its own target-specific trademark venom to survive. And some species don't rely much on their venom at all. If their venom is weak, a scorpion will often have evolved a thin tail and giant pincers for crushing prey. But small pincers and a thick tail full of venom raise the red flag. In the United States, the most dangerous species is the Arizona bark scorpion. This scorpion roams the arid, temperate areas of the American Southwest. If threatened, it will unleash a series of quick jabs with its tail. The venom is potent, shooting through the body like an electrical current. Of the more than 2,000 species of scorpions, fewer than 25 are lethal to humans. And of this group, only a small percentage of their attacks result in death. But it's a deceiving statistic. Despite the odds, scorpions still manage to kill thousands of human beings every year. The severity of the sting depends on the toxicity of the species and the size of the victim. The first effects of a sting are localized, with intense pain and tingling at the site of the hit. The more toxic the venom, the more dramatic the effects. The pain radiates into the body. The tongue and throat grow numb and begin to swell. The chest begins to tighten as the body struggles to fight the poison. A highly toxic venom will rip into the central nervous system. It brings convulsions, fever, and the potential of death. A fighter, a recluse, a killer. The scorpion triggers our most primitive fears, but still earns our respect. They've survived the test of time by brilliantly adapting their behavior and anatomy to accommodate all extremes. By blending a prehistoric simplicity with the nurturing skills of modern mammals, they've defied the odds and thrived. With a track record like theirs, scorpions could well last a hundred million more years. Just a blink of an eye, or rather, a flick of the tail for this remarkable species.